the first workflow we're going to do is how to assign batch numbers to incoming material that's batch trackable on a purchase order. So to kick this off, uh, I'll start off with the first example here of a material that is batch trackable. In this case, it's green coffee beans. So you can see here inside the item card that I have batch and lot numbers activated for this material. And next we will create a purchase order for that item. We'll select a supplier who is a farmer, coffee bean farmer. And then we'll choose green beans here. And let's say we're going to buy uh, 10 kilograms of the green beans. Okay, so how does batch tracking work for incoming material that you have to sign batches to? When you receive the incoming material, that's when you assign batch numbers. So we'll go ahead and choose the receive options. Uh, just for fun, we're going to do a receive some workflow. And then I'll show you kind of how it works, especially if you're doing uh, receipt multiple batches from the same batch in different shipments. So I'll start with receive some. And um, what it does is it brings up this screen. So if you have non-batch trackable items, this screen doesn't come up um, unless you're doing a, um, a receiving process with like a barcode scanner. But in this case, um, we're not going to use a barcode scanner. But when we get into the barcode features, we'll talk all about the workflows and how barcodes work. So in the meantime, uh, we'll start off with this. We'll select the item. We'll choose five kilograms of those beans. And then the red line shows that means we have to fill out this information. So the first thing it does is it says to you, do you want to assign these to an existing batch? Or do you want to create a new batch number? So I can see I have one, two, three, and four. Beans one, two, three, and four. And let's say we want to do a new batch called beans five. Now with batch numbers in general, whatever your naming convention is, is totally up to you. So um, some people use dates. Some people have different types of numbers that mean different things. Whatever works best for you, feel free to go about it as you wish. Now I'm going to create a new one for the sake of this uh, receipt, this partial receipt against this shipment. And this will allocate five beans, five kilograms of beans to the beans five batch. Now, um, when you also bring those in, this is where you should assign, especially if you create a new batch, you should assign an expiration date to them. So in our case, maybe this is a perishable good and it's important to put a, a expiration date on it, which makes sense. So let's say I give it one month uh, till the end of 2022. And I can mark those as received, just like so. Now, this purchase order is currently partially received and everything is fine, no big deal. What I wanted to show you was how to create the batch assignment in that scenario. But if I go to receive all, so there's five more left to receive. And if they're coming in, let's say from the same batch of green beans, but just a different shipment, then I could still assign them to the beans five batch, which has the pre-existing expiration date if those are coming from the same batch, just despite the fact it might be a different shipment. And then I can mark those as received here. And that's it, it's pretty simple. Um, once you've done that process for receiving those materials, you can then go to your stock screen, look at your batches and your material batches, and from the material batches, oh, I'll show the main location here, you'll see uh, that the beans five have arrived in 10 kilos. And here are the expiration dates. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. Something that I want to also point out is here on the material batches screen, there's an expiration date that's in red. You might wonder, what does that mean? That means that today is the day past whatever the expiration date is. These items are probably items that you need to take from stock because they're expired, not safe to sell or safe to use, for example. And um, when you have batches that are expired, this is a good indicator in Katana when you're using it, which ones are ex expired and should be thrown away. 
So very, very helpful and important from that perspective that you can actually um, remove some of these batches from inventory with a stock adjustment, like for through a scrap process, for example, uh, Katana is designed to show this to you. So today is currently the 26th of November, and these are dated the 21st. This means they are expired and thus should be removed from inventory. So that's another way that Katana works to help you uh, keep track and stay on top of things that might be coming, uh, coming expired. So the next bit we'll do is a workflow concerning um, manufacturing. So when you manufacture a good, how do you choose from what materials are going to be consuming batch trackable ingredients and also assigning batches to your manufacturing order for the products that are output from the manufacturing process.